Hello everybody, my name is Justin. In this tutorial we will create the gothic tracery, such as this one. So first step is modeling inside Blender 2.8 beta. Second step is texturing inside Photoshop. By following this tutorial you can make any type of tracery you like. For the purpose of this video we'll be creating the one uh, with the number 3. Now let's go ahead and save the image. Inside Blender uh, enter the front orthographic view by pressing 1 and click Shift A to create new mesh. Let's go ahead and rotate it along the X axis 90 degrees and scale it up. Also uh, scale it along the X axis so it uh, resembles the, pr the ratio of your drawing. Create new material for it and rename it. And enter the shader editor graph where you can drag and drop your image and connect it directly to the base color. Let's go back to the 3D viewport, and this is the result. Let's go ahead and create a curve now. I'm putting the drawing slightly backwards because it was covering the view. Rotating the curve along the x-axis again, and before we edit it, let's go to Object Settings, and turn it to two-dimensional and crank up the resolution to about 50. This is crucial because we'll be using this curve as our guide uh, for the curve modifier. Now in edit mode I am changing the position and scale and rotation of vertices. Also changing the type from aligned to free, which gives me more freedom of movement. I can create a pointed arch for example. Okay, in the edit mode let's go ahead and select the bottom vertex and press Shift S and align the cursor to the selected. Now the 3D cursor is there. Let's exit the edit mode and go to object set origin and set the origin to that very 3D cursor. You can create a new shortcut, Blender 2.79, that was aligned to assigned to Ctrl, Shift, Alt, and C. Adding new uh, curves and uh, change their shapes, I, I keep in mind that I can only edit them in the edit mode. I should not scale them, especially non-uniformly, in the object mode. If I do that, the modifier curves won't work properly later on. Uh, if you want to connect two vertices, select them and press F. You can duplicate the curve in the object mode, then enter the edit mode, select everything and scale along the x-axis with the value negative 1. This way you create a mirror image of the previous curve. For the inner circle, you have to create uh, the circle that is exactly in the center and align the center, the 3D cursor to it. Then you can use the pivot to the 3D cursor in order to create a rosette. At this point I'm just refining the positions of vertices and the cool feature is that you can select multiple in the object mode and then press tab to enter the edit mode and you can basically edit them all at once but they're still separate objects. Next step is creating cross section. As before I created the curve, uh, the Bezier curve and right now we're work working in the top view which can be accessed by pressing 7 and I created a few circles helpers to guide me through this uh, through this section so there is nothing new here I'm just I just keep on adding new vertices extruding existing ones and repositioning them changing their type from time to time uh, so now the resolution of the curve I'm working with is much lower than before remember before we, we had about 50 now it's let's say 10 5 something like this a low value because uh, it's very important to keep the, uh, the cross-section as low poly as possible. Once I'm happy with uh, half of the intersection, I can convert it into the mesh. So as it is converted into mesh, I can refine vertices manually, um, one by one, and then uh, when I'm happy with the result, I can just select everything, press Shift-D to copy it, and uh, mirror it on the other side with the negative value minus one, um, and remove the or dissolve the vertices in the middle because I don't need them anymore. Let's exit the top orthographic view and select everything in the edit mode and press E to extrude it. Now we have the long trim. Um, let's go ahead and select the bottom edges and uh, make mark them as sharp and as seam. Do the same to the top ones. Now I'm selecting the edges that are going to be sharp and marking them as sharp. I'm changing the shading type to shade smooth and turning on the auto smooth normals and cranking up the value 
of the uh, angle so I have the influence on which edges are sharp and which aren't. I'm adding uh, several segments to the trim, remembering that every trim that I make should have the same amount of segments. Let's select the top border and press Alt F to fill it. In the viewport displays let's show the normals. As you can see some of them are broken. So uh, let's select everything by pressing A and press Shift N, which basically recalculates normals. The rule is that if your model looks like a hedgehog, then normals are decent. Now when you have all trims ready, select them and apply their transforms or apply their rotation and scale. Remember that your trims should have the same amount of segments and should have the same height. Now is the time to texture it um, or unwrap it. Uh, so you basically need a seam on the top border, on the bottom border, and you need a seam that goes along the trim. Then you can press U to unwrap it and uh, from my experience I find that angle-based is not that good for non-uniform faces, so you probably should use conformal method of unwrapping. Once you're happy with the, your UV set, you can go ahead and export the UV layout as a PNG. Make sure that you select all the UVs and you select the fill opacity 0. Okay, so now is the time to begin using the curve modifier. So I'm aligning all the, tr all the uh, curves and I prepared all my trims. They are already unwrapped and they are ready to texture. I just keep them in a stack nearby so I can always reuse them. Uh, I keep them unchanged and I just duplicate them, moving them uh, directly to the same spot where the curve origin is and applying the curve modifier. Then I'm changing the orientation axis to Y and now any change I make to that particular trim, which follows the curve, is gonna affect the trim before it is curved, if that makes sense. So basically, if you, for example, scaling it along y-axis, uh, you're scaling the original mesh, the original trim, not the one that is converted. But you can preview it by selecting those two buttons on the modifier tab, near the uh, display in the render and display in the viewport. So once I'm happy with how this thing looks, I can uh, apply the modifier and begin applying uh, other changes to the vertices, such as, as you can see here. Keep in mind that at this point, it's always good to, uh, if, you, if your texture is stretched, to reduce the stretching in the UV editor uh, as fast as possible, because if you forget about it later on, uh, move to the next thing, you, you, you will end up having stretch texture and you, you won't even realize it. So I'm using the same principle for every single trim. Choosing the right trim for the, for the job, I'm duplicating it, repositioning it exactly to the origin of the curve, and then applying the modifier, the curves modifier, which, which then makes the trim follow the curve. And then I apply some basic changes. For example, for the pointed arch, I need to scale it slightly along the y-axis. I also need to make sure that there is an edge loop directly where the angle changes in the curve. Here, in the edit mode, at the very top of the pointed arch, I selected the edge loops, deselecting uh, some of them and marking them as sharp. So for the circle, I'm using the curve modifier and I'm scaling it along the z-axis so it completes the circle precisely. This way, when I convert it to the object, I can select the faces the, 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 and the bottom cup and the top cup, remove them and then merge those vertices, merge the, them by the distance, moving the trim to the curve using the curve modifier. And at this point, it would be nice to go into edit mode and reposition some of these edge loops and also add additional edge loops where the geometry is not sufficient. Here I'm going to move this edge loop using the proportional editing, so I'm moving also the adjacent edge loops, therefore the uh, texture stretching is lessened. And I'm moving them to the places where the, uh, the angle changes in the curve. I'm also scaling it along the y-axis while still in the curve modifier. For this part, I'm going to lower the quality of this particular curve and convert it to the mesh 
Now I just grab those vertices and extrude them and then I can reposition them manually one by one so it fits the gap. Let's reposition this thing and unwrap it. Angle based for meshes like this is the best option. Now I'm gonna turn on the solidify modifier and as usual I'm gonna use the sharp edges. Let's go ahead and remove the unneeded faces and unwrap the, in, the, the faces inside. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Creating a two-dimensional curve with low resolution, converting it into, into the mesh, grabbing the vertices and extruding them. Then making sure that these vertices on the outside follow the shape of the tracery around it. Adding some knife cuts to add a bit more uh, meshing in this area. Repositioning along the y-axis and extruding in inwards, adding the sharp edge so there is a nice sharp angle, adding additional edge loop by pressing Ctrl R so it creates a nice shape like this. This doesn't look very good because we should make them sharp and now they look much better. At this point I created a new image with the UV grid and applied it to this object as an image in the shader, in the shader editor. Uh, now it allows me to make sure that the texture is not stretched roughly the same size and it, it looks decent. So the goal here is to see to be able to see the grid of actual squares, not rectangles. So I'm achieving that by scaling along the z-axis those trims in the UV view while looking at the 3D viewport and, and how the result, lo the result looks like. For the inside, for the rosette, I'm using also curve modifier, but here, uh, before I applied the curve modifier, I repositioned those vertices along the y-axis. I can use proportional editing, but as you can see, I'm also selecting the wrong pieces, so I have to hide them in order to make sure that they're not being moved while using the proportional editing. Voila! Now I can go ahead and press Alt D to duplicate this as an instance. When I move it, I can see that it slightly overlaps, so I can adjust just one of them and the other one will follow the same transform. Once I'm happy with the result and the texturing is correct on this element, I can duplicate it uh, so it fills our rosette. I'm going to do this by pressing Shift D, R, typing in 45, and then pressing Shift R several times. For the inner circle of the rosette, I'm using the same method as before, um, selecting the right trim, moving it to the curve, and then applying the curve modifier. However, before I apply it, uh, I have to scale it uh, down, especially along the z-axis, which makes the texture stretched. In this particular case, I also have to rotate the trim 90 degrees uh, along the y-axis, removing this inner faces and merging vertices uh, where the two ends of the circle meet. For the column, I create eight-sided cylinder, rotate it along the z-axis 22.5 degrees, rescale it and reposition it so it matches the tracery. And then I'm just extruding and adding edge loops and making sure that uh, this octagon remains equilateral. So while scaling it, I have to scale it uniformly along the X and Y axes. Now I'm adding sharp edges, turning on the normals outer smooth option, high value of the angle. Then I sculpt the base, which is improvising because I don't have reference for that. It turns out to be quite good. Basic idea of creating this column is when you have the cylinder, you look at it from the orthographic front view and you keep on extruding the edge loop. So from time to time you have to go to perspective view to see how your column looks in 3D. For texturing, you have to create a seam along the length of the column, the seam on the very top and the very bottom. Also, create additional seam just above the bottom, the base of the column, and just below the top of the column. For the mesh like this, it's good to use the conformal type of unwrapping, 
for the middle of the column and the angle based unwrapping for the top and the base. Last step is going to the 3D view with everything visible and then selecting edges, edge loops around the border of your mesh. So basically you select the ones that define the shape. Then you duplicate them by pressing Shift D, moving them outside and separating it from the rest of the object. This is how it looks. Now hide the original mesh and this is what we, are end up, what we end up with, just an outline of the tracery. Readjust the topology to create enclosed loops of edges. In this case they are enclosing the stained glass. So we are trying to recreate exact shape of the stained glass. We need only a half of this because the stained glass will be symmetrical and for the in the rosette we just want, need one piece because now then we're gonna grab it and repeat it around the whole thing. At this point select those borders and fill them with faces. If you fill it with the triangles by selecting the border and pressing Alt F, remember that the triangles should not be very stretched. If they are non-uniform that most likely the texture will have issues. So for this uh, main arch I'm creating rectangles by selecting them and bridging them. Then I add additional loops just to make sure that I have more uniform uh, rectangles, not stretched. Okay, so this is final result of the stained glass. Let's go ahead and select everything and unwrap it with the angle based option. Now I can rotate eyelids and reposition them in the UV view. So as you can see there is a lot of space on the left side and this is for the future design. Then I'm exporting the UV and I'm ready to begin texturing. So that was modeling of our gothic tracery with the stained glass. I will soon release part 2 of this tutorial where I texture it and create a PBR material. Uh, before I end this tutorial I would like to highly recommend checking the Unreal Engine Marketplace where I sell uh, some of my asset packs and one of them made the front page, the Gothic Island, and this model, this asset pack actually consists, contains meshes that are very similar in style to what I created in this tutorial. And I'm gonna put this particular stained glass and tracery in this pack as well. So it has uh, cathedrals, buildings, uh, and also recommend uh, checking the um, this, this model on the Sketchfab and other models that I sell there. Um, yeah, so the cool thing about Sketchfab is that you can preview the model very thoroughly, check it out what the hell is going on, uh, how it's made, and you can see the textures as well. If you, for example, go here, just select this element, you can see how the texture for the uh, stained glass looks like, how the texture for those trims look like, and for the stone wall and etc. You know, stuff like this. Or for example, we can check out the roughness, you know, and other PBR maps. Yeah, so this is it. I highly recommend checking it out. So see you.